okay. Hi. Hey. <laughs> hey. For those that don't know, I'm Mariah, um, educator in Upper Manhattan and East Harlem. And I'm John, educator in Central to North Brooklyn. Yes, and we've decided to come together to answer some of your frequently asked questions or the questions we get from students, right? Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, John, a question that I know we both get a lot is how do you trust? How do you trust somebody? Hmm. Um, when I think about trust, I think of it's like a progression. Um, I think it's like, you know, you, it's like, it's like building an understanding of safety with, with, with people that certain boundaries are going to be respected. You know, when, when it really comes down to trust, like what is trust? It's like, I have confidence in you that you will respect my boundaries. Um, and I think that confidence is something that it grows organically and naturally. Like it's not something you have to force and push, but over time, if you're being your real self and being honest about how you feel about things and what things you do and don't like, like. How they respond to that, I think, will give you a sense of, does this person respect boundaries, which to me is what trust comes down to. Mm, I liked that, that confidence and respect. Um, those are two words that stick out to me. And it makes me think, yes, like on my own personal journey to trusting, it has been about having confidence in myself and confidence that I can listen to my gut. Mm. So I feel like there's never like a formula of like, if I do this, this and that, and there's this checklist, then I'll be a trusting person or I'll be able to trust this person. That's like the irony or the difficult part of this, right? Is like, we want to trust other people, but first we have to have confidence in ourselves um, that when something is really going off and we're like, oh, this, this isn't right. That would be like, okay, that's clearly my body saying to me, I don't trust this person. And as much as I think they're cute, they're hot, they're sexy, everybody else likes them, I think I need to back away from this situation. And it's going to be hard, but I can't make this person trustworthy. I can only, like, make choices for myself. Yeah, and I, could, I can definitely think of, I mean, really getting to this place of, like, trusting yourself. Like, I'm at my late 30s, I really feel like I'm starting to get there. And I've seen how it's actually come in and interfered in relationships to not have that sense of what is okay for me. Um, you know, somebody oversteps a boundary or makes you feel like not respected or seen or heard um, and then not speaking up about it. And then just thinking about how that does hurt the trust in that relationship because they've hurt you in a certain way. You haven't actually let them know and you haven't given them a chance to understand that, respect that and, and build that trust back up. Mm. Um, so, so much of it is, yeah, knowing what it is for you and being able to articulate it. Mm. Um, and then also, you know, there should be a measure of people picking up on each other's signals. Like, I shouldn't have to tell you everything. Like, if you see I'm upset, like, that should be enough for you to, should be enough information for you to know how to respond. Mm. Mm. Yes. So, let me make it more specific. What if we had a middle schooler come to us and say, um, the, I'm dating someone. And they're kind of known to be a little bit of a player. And when they're with me, they're different. And I, and I like them and I think they're being honest with me. But all of a sudden, I'm seeing their activity on Instagram or Snapchat. Snapchat and I'm, like, not trusting them anymore. What, what advice would we, would we give them? Um, have the awkward conversation. <laughs> you know, tell them. Your concerns, you know, I, I, kids have asked me that a lot. I guess that's a common question in middle school. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a matter of, um, ah, I lost my train of thought. You pick it up. It's okay. Yeah. So having the conversation. Yeah. So yeah. not be like, yo, I knew you were going to do this. You're a player. All my girls told me that you're a player. I don't think maybe that's, that, that's like the instinct, but I think that's not healthy communication and all the things we've been teaching. So having the conversation, maybe saying, it makes me uncomfortable when you like comment sexy on someone else's Insta. It just makes me feel uncomfortable. And then see what their response is going to be. Maybe yeah, that's you're, you're always in your right to say how things are affecting you. You know, I have this concern, you know, um, like being honest. And I think, you know, being checking how we talk to people, not being accusatory and, 
you know, putting somebody on, on the defensive before the conversation's even gotten rolling. Um, so yeah, how you start conversations, there is a bit of a skill to like how you start an awkward conversation in a way that communicates to the person, like we're gonna do this in like a chill way, not in, not in like, no one's on trial. Um, and again, that, that increases trust when people see like we can work through conflict without putting each other on trial. Mm -hmm. So what do you say, John, to, um, you know, someone being friends with their ex and that being like a, a trust thing? How, would you say that that's a healthy thing or not healthy? Um, if, if the relationship is over and the relationship is transitioned into a different type of relationship, a friendship, like if you have doubts, communicate it, talk about it. Um, if for some reason you feel that they didn't completely end the relationship and you have doubts about that, express those concerns. You know, I think to me, like the, the ultimate relationship skill is like being able to initiate a difficult conversation. You know, I feel like so much trouble comes into our relationships because we're scared of having the like, hey, can we talk? You know, like that's really where it begins. Um, but that's scary. Mm, yeah, I agree. I agree. And I think what John said is key about if the relationship is really over and it's really, really transitioned into something else. Um, I think oftentimes when we all talk about abuse, we say you can't control anybody, um, anybody's life except your own. And so you really can't say, right, it gets into that unhealthy abusive territory if you say, I don't want you talking to that person anymore because that's trying to control someone. Um, but, it, but it goes back to that weird thing of being like, is my gut telling me something and how do I control my response to my gut, not make it the other person's responsibility to like calm my gut down because they, they can't, only I can. So I agree with John. I think you can be friends with an ex um, and that might make you a little bit uncomfortable, but it's how you initiate that conversation instead of being like, you can't talk to them anymore. We're not dating because that's unhealthy. And on a side note, sometimes kids have asked like, how can you stay friends with somebody after you've after you've dated, and I just don't break up in a very good and respectful, caring way. <laughs> and then those possibilities can be there. You know, if you if For you sure. break up in like in a hurtful, harsh way that you know isn't necessary and makes a person feel like it's going to be really hard to have a connection in the future. But you know, we can definitely say our feelings have changed, and you know, I still care about you, um, and that can be a really healthy friendship after that because you know each other in a different way. What would be breaking up in a respectful way? How would you initiate that? Um, I think it's a, I think like one, it's not one conversation. I think like people in a relationship, like there should be, I don't think it's healthy when a couple is always talking about the relationship, but I think checking in about the relationship is something healthy couples do. Just making sure both people, it should, it should be voluntary. We're both, we're here because we want to be here. Um, and just making sure that that's the case. Um, and as those feelings start to change, that's like, someone shouldn't be blindsided, you know, it should be like, oh yeah, well, we've been talking about this for a while. And, and it's it, like, when it's a mutual decision that is like, this is better for both of us. Um, in my life and my friends' lives, I've seen, um, pretty great friendships come out of those. After. What do you do if someone breaks up with you and, or you break up with someone and they don't, they don't want to be friends with you? What do you do? You have to accept it. I mean, you can you can um, express what you you know like I I want to be friends with you. I know I, that's not can't do that, and that's okay. And then you can express some hope for the future. But in the end, you know, respecting boundaries. They've ex communicated a boundary about the the emotional space they have for you, and if you don't respect that, then you're like basically harassing them. Mm, yeah, I like that you said that. And that's happened to me in my life too, where I've been like. I'm cool with you. Let's be cool. Like there was love there once. Let's continue the friendship. And then the ex was really like, I can't, I can't do that. And it was hard for me to accept that, but I, but I had to, cause that was their boundary that they were communicating. Yeah. Breakups are tough. You know, it's, it's a, uh, an important relationship that's now transitioned to a different type of relationship and you're going to have different expectations for what you can get out of it and um, how they're going to respond to you. You know, like the first time, the person you used to date takes a while to text you back now. You're like, oh, <laughs> new, new, new reality to get used to, you know, but that's growth. If we can adjust to how things change, like then we're more able to kind of be present with our lives and in the world and, and handle what comes our way.
Mm -hmm. For sure. Agreed.